and welcome to the latest episode of the Rocker Dog Podcast, the only podcast that talks to musicians about their canine companions. I'm your host, Tim Dill, along with my freshly groomed and sweet-smelling dog, Charlie, and today we welcome to the show drummer Jay Weinberg of Slipknot, who's also toured and played with Bruce Springsteen in the E Street Band and Against Me, and these are his life-changing Rocker Dogs. So my dogs are Papaya and Pixie. They're both Petit Brabanson, the, uh, they're little Griffies. And uh, and yeah, they're the loves of, of our lives. Like Papaya is about two and a half and Pixie is, uh, she'll be one in July. So yeah, they're, uh, you know, they're, they're amazing dogs. I, I honestly can't think of what my life was like without them. I, I love to hear that. And it's funny, I have a, I pulled a couple of quotes that you've you've mentioned in, in Instagram and even, you know, a quote that one of your commenters said, but, you know, one of your quotes on International Puppy Day was, thanks for changing our lives, little girl. And I, I think that was particular to Papaya at the time because Pixie yeah. wasn't in the, in the scene yet. But what is it about these dogs that speak to you on such a deep level? Man, well, uh, it's a great question. I, you know, I've been, I've been close to dogs like most of my life. My family, <laughs> traditionally, we had pugs. So we got our first pug when I was 13, a girl named Natasha. And it was actually, uh, so it's kind of like, uh, it was, it was a thought that my mom and dad had that they wanted two dogs eventually. Like we had cats, like my whole adolescence and stuff and early, like ch- early childhood, but I, like I think I was just gravitating more towards dogs into my teenage years, and it was like okay, we like we got to get a, like a family dog, and so we didn't, and we didn't want one. We wanted two, so they could be you know pal around and stuff. So so it was their idea. They wanted to name the dogs that we were going to get uh, Natasha, um, uh, Boris, and Natasha uh, okay. after the Rocky and Bullwinkle <laughs> characters. But so we got Natasha first, and then her half brother. Uh, it was from a different father i believe frank we named him frank because he just wasn't a boris and i had like <laughs> earlier uh, earlier in my childhood i was obsessed with men in black and i think that's where i like fell in love with the pug breed to begin with was like when i was seven years old i saw men in black and the one of the main characters is a talking pug named right. frank so we uh uh, so we had Natasha and Frank, and then a couple years later, we actually found a found a rescue pug, like a, a, a litter that needed rescuing. So we took we took the youngest, uh, like the little runt, out of that out of that group, uh, and his name was Henry. And so those were like our child, my childhood dogs, like our family's dogs. And actually, sadly, Henry just passed this past year. Um, at like really old age, like he was like 16 and had an amazing life. So, you know, that was kind of my foray into, into really, you know, being hands-on and caring for, uh, for animals and for dogs and stuff. Cause with cats, you can kind of just like a lot of, a lot of the time they're left to their own devices and they kind of prefer to just do things on their own, but dogs, especially pugs and then when you get into like velcro dogs like brussels griffons they they really uh you know they they demand that uh that personal connection with you literally like all the time um so that was my first experience with that and i think that was really helpful in just like you know caring for something that that needs caring for you know and having my maybe my first sense of like actual responsibility you know in, in my life really when i was like 13 was like, oh, I have to, I'm caring for this, you know, this thing. And obviously that was like my pets, my, my family pets. But now, you know, my wife and I, you know, we, we moved in Nashville. And then at the beginning of COVID happening, we had already been talking about uh, like, oh, I think it's, you know, we're, we're ready for, you know, for something to take care of. We're ready for a dog and we're obsessed with, with Griffey's like, you know, it's, it's like it's there are there are favorite dogs when we meet them you know out in the wild and stuff they're they're just so much fun and and um and they very much feel like our speed at, of a dog you know like they're right. everything about them so that's how uh that's how papaya came into our life and and yeah she really you know it, it was it was my first at like semblance as an adult of like here's something that's completely under our supervision and our our care you know, and that, that does change your life. You know, your, your priorities shift a little bit, um, where now, you know, you're not being, 
such a, you know, like a selfish late 20 year old or something like that, you know, when you're living life on your own terms. Now you do have just something that needs, you know, your your constant care and companionship. And 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 we love it. Like we we were ready for that challenge and for that, you know, for the beauty of all that a, a new dog brings to your life, you know. So, yeah, so it completely like overnight just changed how I look at life and and how, you know, she's like the first besides, you know, my wife and myself. It's like she's our she was our first kind of foray into like, OK, we're creating like our little family here, right. you know, and then, uh, you know, uh, a lot of steps in between. But then it, it obviously to us made sense. It's like, OK, we want to get a dog for our dog and give her some <laughs> companionship, because I think that's also something is that like being a COVID puppy, you know, like she, she didn't know too much like interaction with people or with other dogs. So she was very much like an only child at first. And she didn't have much, much interactivity besides us. So, but she would love whenever she would meet another dog, she would love it and she would love playing and stuff. So I was like, okay, you know, I think it's time for us to, uh, you know, now we'll be balancing even, you know, double the everything it, it takes for new like dog parents. But, but yeah, I, it, it like made complete sense. And when we got Pixie, it was like, oh my God, how did, how do we not have both of them? It's like, <laughs> you know, there's those moments in your life where, where I think you, you kind of wonder like how you ever operated or like when you find your partner or you find your, you know, your pets and stuff, it's like, what was life even like before you were around? I don't, I don't get how that would work. Yeah, so true. So true. Well, it's funny that you mentioned that she's a, a Velcro type of dog, mm -hmm. you know, and I looked up the breed and some of the things that were thrown out were smart, devoted and comically self-important, which stood out <laughs> to me. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Now, given the, given the two personalities, how do they are they? Are they much alike or are they kind of have their own little thing going on between Pixie and Papaya? They have some things in common, but we did notice like pretty much off the bat. It's like because we had gotten used to, you know, we had Papaya for, I suppose, like almost two years uh, before we got Pixie. And so so we were used to Papaya's personality and her the things she likes to do every day and what, you know, how she wants her her nap time and, and stuff like that. So we got used to that. And then when we got Pixie, it, they had similarities, but it was like, oh my God, this is amazing seeing a dog that's totally different as well. When we got her, we didn't know if if Papaya would be jealous, if she'd be like, what is this thing that you're bringing into our world or whatever. But Pixie immediately just chose to run the show. She was like, wow, who are you? I guess I live here now and, and I'm going to, you know, just run your world. So she was just like... You know, Papaya didn't have much like playful uh, interactions with dogs on a daily basis. And now all of a sudden she's got this rambunctious little, you know, little girl just like totally running, you know, running her wild every day. And so that was an adjustment. But she's grown, you know, Pixie's definitely grown into herself a little bit. And she's uh, she's started to mature and and learn, you know, the the dynamics of like sisterhood, I suppose. And uh and what we notice is that like papaya is how do I how do I put this? Pixie's like really good in the ways that papaya is like she'll she'll be a nuisance and and stuff where Pixie's just like she wants to behave well, she really wants to impress papaya all the time. <laughs> like she just looks up to her so much. And so we note we notice that pretty much off the bat that like if papaya would be misbehaving or barking at people you know while we're on a walk or something and she just wants to say hi she's just very you know she is very friendly she's never like snapped at anyone but you know but she'll bark and get really animated and stuff whereas pixie just wants to be really good and she's well very well behaved and they kind of they kind of oscillate between the two because we noticed when we got pixie that papaya immediately snapped into this kind of mode of like well i'm I'm the older sibling and I, you know, I do everything better than you. So, you know, I'm going to be the well-behaved one while you're just like running around like crazy. But we notice that they kind of like switch on and off. They take turns being the the naughty one. But Pixie is like, she's, she's very, very sweet. She's a lot quieter than Papaya was even at that age where Papaya started to like learn how to bark and she would hear a sound from outside and like kind of go crazy. Pixie's very much quiet it takes a lot for her to like to 
to say something. Is but she I love is, her. is she as needy Velcro wise, like needing to be held or close? For sure. So do you between you and your wife, do you guys have, you know, are you you take pixie, she takes papaya, or vice versa? Or is it just kind of whatever the situation presents itself? <laughs> uh if I'm being honest, they probably both just like gravitate towards her even more than than one of them chooses me. I think that's by nature of like Sometimes dad leaves for like a month at a time, you know, when I go out on tour and stuff. So they they are very Velcro with me, but I think they also get used to that time with Chloe being like, you know, well, you know, you're on tour for like a month. So when when we're in bed, they just want to, yeah, they they just sandwich you in. So usually it's like one of them on either side of her. But every now and then, like, you know, yeah, Pixie, I think she gravitate towards, you know, she'll gravitate towards hanging out with me. And then Papaya knows that she can like relax with mom and mom's going to protect her from this wild child. And I'll like, you know, I'll like try to get energy, try to get Pixie's energy expended, you know, other otherwise and, and go a little crazy with her. And then hopefully she'll chill out and not bother Papaya. Cause we, that was like something that we were like, you know, we were very worried about is that, that Velcro attachment thing is like very real. And I didn't want, I didn't want kind of any emotional upheaval in Papaya's life because now, you know, she has to share things. She has to share time. And, you know, like now, now there's, they're having breakfast together. So she has to, you know, now she has to feel like she has to protect her, her food or whatever. So we try to, we try to encourage them to just like not be in each other's business like that to the point where it's annoying, but yeah, no, for sure. They like, they get pretty good. Like when, when, if we're like, you know, on the couch or something, they like one of them will choose me and then one of them will choose Chloe. And then like, it ends up that both of them just want to be around Chloe. I think that's just like who, who they imprint on or who what like they just imprint on, on the mother. And that's like, that's their connection. I'm I'm yeah. okay with that. I, I don't think it's, 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 it sounds like it's the girls' club if they're all you know they're all females, right? It is. Um, travel wise, I noticed on you know obviously you're a touring musician with Slipknot. I see your wife joins you on occasion. Who do you trust the dogs with when you you know when there's extended periods of time you have to leave? Uh, friends and family will have like you know they'll they'll watch over. We'll just have them like, hey, do you want to live at our house and and just take care of the girls and so that's been a, a huge help in that you know we've had a, a great community whether it is literally our our uh family or uh or really really close friends who will just you know they'll they'll be there with them 24 7 and luckily we have friends who in this day and age it's fortunate to be able to have like work remotely where it's like oh yeah i can just stay at your house yeah. watch the girls and i can work from my laptop and it, it, it works it works to our advantage for sure it's always a tricky balance. We sometimes have to sacrifice like, oh, okay, you know, nobody's necessarily available because they have their own lives. So it's like, okay, Chloe won't join me for, for this part of our touring or or whatever. So that, and that's just all part of like life balance, you know, just understanding that, you know, we can't, can't always have the fortune of, of being together on tour or always having, you know, whatever. It's just, that's how you kind of balance your responsibilities and, and try not to spend too much you know time away from each other i think i've noticed like you know as i've grown older and stuff it's it is nice to try to um to try to bring some normality to otherwise situations that are like otherwise totally in flux i mean like being on tour is is very normal to me now but it does help help you kind of get through like a prolonged period of of time away from home especially because like we spent the majority of the last like 15 months out on tour you know, it is nice and we are very fortunate to be able to be on tour with our partners, not necessarily with dogs, because I think, you know, once you <laughs> introduce that element to it, then you can kind of go sideways. And yeah, I would, I would feel like the biggest jerk if, you know, if Papaya was incessantly barking and, and waking somebody up on, on our tour bus or something, that would yeah, be sure. no good. Um, but, you know, it, it's all it's all just a balance, just like anything. You know, um, I try not to. Uh, if I can help it, I like to, you know, be able to check in with them from time to time on tour. And sometimes you're able to do that without them even being on tour. Sometimes we'll be like within driving distance of home and, uh, and they'll tag along and we, and we will have the dogs out with us, like on the road for a little bit where my wife can like drive to each show and, and, and we can have the dogs with us for, you know, for a little bit of time. So, mm -hmm. so that is nice. But yeah, it, it definitely is a, uh, a balance. Um, I'm sure a lot of touring, 
you know, people in our touring environment who have dogs can can relate to that, that it's, it's definitely a challenge of balancing it. Yeah. On Instagram, I see a lot of posts about the dogs being upset because the bag is being packed and they sense what's going on and they know what's going on. And I've seen it on, actually, I've seen it on your Instagram. Totally. Yeah. Uh, the, um, I don't think Papaya understood what the what the suitcase meant probably on the first tour that she saw me go out on. But I clearly remember on the second one, she saw it come out. And she, and when I wasn't looking, she just walked into into my suitcase and just pooped right in the middle of it. Oh, no, you're she kidding. Was like, I hate this thing. <laughs> this means that you're leaving. Yeah, she went. went uh, so actually, we've we've found a way to uh, for me to get ready for tour where she doesn't see it. And it is it, sad. I mean, I, I, I don't I don't enjoy that element of like having to leave home because you can see they understand, you know, they they understand yeah. the disappointment of like, oh, I haven't seen that thing in, a, in like a month. And now it's coming back out. That means dad's going to be away for a while. And then my wife will send me videos of them just kind of like looking at the door, waiting for me to walk in for like weeks and like, like three weeks in, I can tell that it's like impacting papayas like you know her moods and stuff and in right. fact that was that was one of the tipping factors for us was just to keep more companionship in 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 her life and and stuff is that like i don't want her being that sad when i when i leave because it's just the nature of what i do so then it was like okay let's get her a friend let's get her a sister and that'll keep her you know companionship levels up a little bit more uh, when I am gone, maybe she'll, you know, it'll affect her less emotionally. And I think that's, that's proven to be true. I think she really, you know, she really enjoys being a big sister, even though, if, even if she bullies Pixie, when Pixie just wants to like impress her and, and play with her and stuff. And if she like, I don't want to play or whatever, she really does love uh, Pixie. So, uh, so I find that that's been like beneficial to our, our whole experience was like, okay, this is the right choice. Getting her, getting our dog a dog. Yeah. So uh, tell me about the wedding. I noticed there were pictures of Papaya and you and your wife for your wedding pictures. Was she, mm -hmm. did she make a role in the wedding or did she just make an appearance for photos? Yeah, she was like, she was the flower girl. Yeah. So uh, she had a little kind of like flower bouquet on her, on her collar. And it was amazing. Like we were so impressed because it was, I think it might have been a little overwhelming, even though it was like a really small wedding. It was only like 20 people she didn't really get to have a nap that day so she was like incredibly well behaved by the time the ceremony came around she was just like you know and again it was it was the first time she'd been around 20 people like in her life because because we had we had gotten her maybe four months before that if that maybe two months and so of course like we needed to have her as part of the wedding even like we had a friend of ours instead of doing like um wedding photos or engagement photos we had a very talented artist friend of ours make uh like an engagement art piece that featured papaya in it as well because it's like that's our family you know like we completely you know i mean i i, I know the difference between having your own human children and having dogs but it's like you know this is our first foray into like true real responsibility and and i feel like that is you know this part of your family i wouldn't consider her her any less a, a family member than any one of my human relatives yeah. you know what i mean so so of course yeah we had to find a role for her in in the wedding and so she was the flower girl and she was right up front and like totally well behaved didn't make a peep and we were very very impressed <laughs> yeah i'll have to share some of the pictures uh once once this episode goes up it's yeah. very very cute <laughs> Speaking of artists, you were mentioning, you know, an artist, you know, helped you with your, your uh, wedding stuff. And I know you're an artist yourself. Oftentimes my guests have a tattoo, you know, saluting their, their pet or memorializing their pet. And I know you've got Papaya's name I do. in your arm. And I, my, my question right to you is what was the creative process behind that? Because you as an artist, I know it just wasn't, I'm going to, I'm going to write it. Did you explore, like, is it going to be a picture? What's the style? What's the, you know, if it's a, you know, if it is type, is it a font? Is it a script? Yeah. Uh, so I, I have a, a great friend, BJ Betts, uh, who's an amazing, um, uh, very well-known tattoo artist who um, his specialty is like incredible lettering. And he had tattooed friends of mine. That's how we met. We had actually met a couple of years before I did a painting, like a live painting event with Vans uh, Shoe Company at an event they were holding in uh, in Huntington Beach. So I was like in a stall the guy who's like the animator for Bob's Burgers was doing uh, nice. like caricatures of people in one stall. And then BJ was tattooing a uh, little flash in, in the next stall. 
And so he actually tattooed my wife and we met and he, you know, hit it off. He's a really great guy. And so when we got papaya, it was just this, like, it was a, you know, a connection unlike anything I've ever felt in my life. And I just felt like, I mean, it's traditionally like you kind of hear it's bad luck to get your partner's name tattooed on you or something. Yeah. But I feel I feel like, you know, it was apropos of of this this event in in our life of like, she's my dog. She's, you know, the the first real thing that I've had, like the true responsibility of like making sure she, you know, she she grows up the way that we want her to grow up and, and have a great life. And so I felt I, I took that really to heart. And so, you know, and I just like my wife came up with her name and I, I just love I just love the name Papaya because I don't think I've ever met another dog named Papaya. And I was like, oh, man, if I get that tattooed, I bet BJ would like do a great job because it's like incredible. You know, it's very ornate, very beautiful yep. script. And he just totally killed it. So I haven't gotten Pixie yet, though. So I got to I have to balance it out with Pixie. And I don't you know. I don't know if, uh, you know, we, we've, we've talked about like, oh man, now that we have Pixie, like, what if we got, what if we got another Griffey and just keep adding to this party? And it's like, I'm going to run out of space of tattoos soon. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was very meaningful to get Papaya memorialized in that way. Cause you know, I feel, I feel like that connection with her is, you know, it's eternal for sure. And I, and I don't think that's unique. I think like everybody, everybody who, who has that serious of a connection with their pet really, you know, really feels that way. Yeah, agree. I, I would have to go through my list of, you know, we're, we're probably pushing 30 episodes so far. And I'd say almost half the people I've talked to have ink of their pet in some yeah. way, shape or form. Yeah, I think, you know, there, there's probably something to that in with like people who get tattoos and stuff like you, you know, some some are meaningful, some just, you know, are whatever, like body decoration and stuff like that. But I feel like we're always motivated to adorn yourself with like artwork that just tells your story and you know in a way and so it's like she's such a huge part of our life both of them are so to me it's like I just like could, I couldn't imagine not having them in in my life now you know it's like of, of course I'll have them with me forever you know on, on my body that's that's pretty great yeah I also want to ask you about there's a picture of her and this goes back probably to close to when you got her but she has a cast did she break her arm or was there a story behind that? Yeah. Yeah. The most stressful night, like worst experience ever. Yeah. Uh, this goes back to October 2020, I believe. So she was probably about five months old. And yeah, she. Uh, we were in Salem, Massachusetts, and we were walking around. Uh, we were visiting some friends up there and just exploring Salem in, in October, like typical kind of like tourists checking out that kind of stuff. And we brought her walking around and we were in like a park where there were there were a bunch of dogs. Um, not many, but probably like one or two. So people were just like walking their dogs. And I think we were just trying to get her to like go to the bathroom before we went to the, back to our Airbnb or hotel or something. And um, she had seen I was hold I was holding her. We were I think we were like walking back to our car and I was holding her. And there was like a Great Dane off the just like off the side or something. And I don't think she had ever she had never seen a dog like that big. And it freaked her out so bad that like there was no even like warning that she was like freaked out. Like she was totally chill, just kind of like in my arms. And then she just got, got crazy spooked and ran like she was in my arms and ran up my shoulder, tried to like run up my neck. And I try. I tried myself to to like pound, like just get right down on the ground because I felt like I was I was like losing control of her. And um, she was about she was probably about like four and a half feet off the ground or something. Like by the time I, I was like crouching down, she probably fell from about like elbow height, and she fell right on her her leg, and it snapped in half. Oof. Um, and then all of a sudden, she's you know she's screaming, and I'm just like it, I I. I like totally blue screen. I, I, I is the most frightened I've like ever been in my life. Cause all of a sudden here's this, you know, this creature who's like the most important thing to me. And all of a sudden now she's like screaming in pain. And, and I, I mean, like to this day, I still have like, like minor PTSD from it because it was so, it, it was just so traumatic. And I, you know, we didn't know what, what to do. Right. Um, it was like super, you know, it was like, maybe not super late at night but it was probably like you know we had just had dinner it was probably like 10 at night or something like that so we're like oh my god what do we do we're in a place that we've never been in, in before like what do we do um thankfully I, I mean i i still 
reflect on how how truly fortunate and lucky we were. We have some family friends who live around the Boston area who have dogs and have had dogs. And we called them. I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to call them and see if they have any recommendation what to do. And thankfully, our friends were like, bring them, like, just get right on the highway, go right to uh, Angel uh, Animal Hospital. It's A-N-G-E-L-L Animal Hospital. Uh, it's like right in Boston. And it it turns out, you know, none of us planned it this way, but it turns out like that's like one of, if not the best animal hospital, like in the U.S. Um, right. They get all their all their training, all the doctors there get their training from like Tufts, I believe is near there. So they're just like incredibly talented, you know, animal doctors and vets and stuff. And so we brought her right there. And, and I mean, we are freaking out. It was like her, her leg, you know, it looked like one of those horrible skateboard accidents that you see when you, you know, you fall on your leg or something. It's just, it's, it's, it's an L shape. It's completely broken in half. Oh gosh. Oh my God. Yeah. I, I hate thinking about it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but we were, we were very fortunate in that she was young enough to where, you know, the bone was going to, was going to heal. Okay. They need it. She, but, but she was just in, she was just big enough. If she was any smaller, they told us that she would have had to have a, um, a cage with a couple screws outside of her leg. Ooh, yeah. Um, to help it heal because you couldn't, you know, you couldn't do like an invasive surgery with that, like with something that small, like if she was any smaller, it would have had to have been like this external cage, which would have been a lot more complicated to, uh, of a healing process. But thankfully she had just grown big enough to wear the, the absolute smallest plate that they could fit in her leg to then screw the pieces back together did fit in her leg. So she's a little bit, you know, she, we a little bionic. Yeah, a little bionic dog. And she, you know, she's more metal than all of her dog friends. She has, you know, she has a metal, metal plate in her, uh, in her arm. And it was a, it was a real lesson for me and my wife with just like responsibility and crisis management. And just like, you know, we had to snap to and make, you know, make decisions real quick and, and just like, oh my God, it was like, so crazy traumatic, but thankfully, thankfully, thankfully it wasn't worse than it was. And you know, that she didn't like hit her head yeah. or something or whatever. I mean, like, I, I mean, like to this day, it's really hard for me to like let myself off the hook, even though I, you know, it wasn't intentional, but it was just one of those freak accidents that you don't know how to overcome it until you're just like in it and your adrenaline is going and you got to figure out what to do and, and try to save this, you know, this creature who can't help themselves. And so, yeah. and she, and, you know, she's all good. Her healing went great. And, um, and she, you know, probably, probably about like seven or eight weeks after that, she was back to like running around and stuff. And she grew, you know, she grew much more and her bone is like, they, we, we took her to get the x-ray, you know, looked at and they were like, this healed perfectly. Like it, 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 it's as if it like never even happened. Although now she has a metal plate in her arm. <laughs> But yeah, you know, that was, uh, that was scary, but that, you know, my like endless, endless lifelong gratitude to the the people at Angel, like I honestly could, I could not imagine what it would have been like if we didn't have them. They were like truly incredible uh, to, you know, to have them take care of that. Yeah. Well, that's great to hear. And um, thank you for sharing that story. I, I fortunately haven't had anything in that degree of difficulty. You know, I've had emergency visits and this and that, but I, I feel for you and would also encourage you to like, you should have no guilt. My dogs jumped out of my arms numerous times and everyone who listens to the show can, can relate. So but yeah, glad, glad it yeah. all worked out. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, you know, it's one of those things you, you know, thankfully just wasn't worse. And now, you know, whenever, whenever I take her for a walk or whenever I have her in, in my arms, I do like, I, I do carry that with me. It's like, I, you know, I have like a, a definite grip on her harness now right. and stuff like that. Like it's, it's like, Oh man, you know, that'll wake you up. But, uh, but yeah, thankfully, thankfully she's, she's all good. Excellent. Well, listen, as time winds down, I do what I call the zoomies and that's the last five quick questions. Okay. So, so the first question I've seen photographic evidence of, but I'll ask it anyways. And that is, do you kiss your dogs on the mouth? <laughs> oh, sure. I mean, they, they don't give me any choice. You know, they, they like, they're absolute like lick monsters, you know? So we try to, we like, we've tried to curb them from being like so intense, especially when like people come over and they're all up in their business and stuff. 
it's so embarrassing when you're like, oh my God, get off, like get off my dad or whatever. But no, I mean, hey, you know, it's like, I, I don't know. Yeah, I have I have no issue kissing my my dogs on the mouth. <laughs> okay, that, that is the correct answer. I, I yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Question two, what I'm looking for is a shameless name dropping, and it doesn't always work out this way, but does she, have any of the girls licked anyone famous? Um, I could say, I mean, my dad, I would say, is a is a notable, you know, well-known yeah. musician who they've, uh, you know, they've licked them. They've licked him on the face countless times. He loves them, too. Like, um, you know, now that our our childhood dogs have passed and, and they, you know, they don't have any dogs of their own. Um We've actually gone down to uh, to them to visit and left them left the dogs with uh, with them for a little bit and like it's my dad you know they're his grand dogs you know yeah. so uh, yeah. so he gets to spoil them and and oh gee, oh yeah they they definitely you know uh, they're velcro on him as well I so uh, so yeah I'll go with that they've they've kissed my dad there's a famous musician okay hey that's <laughs> that's that's a good answer. Yeah. Question three is, could you give either of them a theme song? Is there a song that kind of typifies who they are? Is there a song that you kind of sing to them at times or? Yeah. Uh, what early on. So I, I was unaware of this, but I, I found it completely fitting that there's uh, the group from Japan, baby metal. They had uh, people were asking me when we, when we first, you know, came out with papaya as our, as our pet everyone's like oh my god did you name her after the the baby metal song and i was like i didn't even know that they had they like they have a song called papaya and it's not like papaya like we named her after the fruit but they have a song that's like papaya and and it's like it you know it's like this very energetic like action kind of song and so that was like papaya's theme song for a little <laughs> bit once we once we determined that it's like like oh my god this band has like a you know a theme song that works for her yeah, totally. So that was like Papaya's theme song that we we uh, we had for her for a little bit. Oh man, I know I'm I'm just blanking of what like we'll we'll turn anything into a theme song for them. Like we could turn, right. you know, we could turn Master of Puppets into a into a theme song for the dogs. So right. pretty much, I mean, if you're around us, like around the house and stuff, we're pretty much turning anything that we're listening to into a a theme song for the dogs. Um, okay. Sounds, yeah, sounds no. a lot like my house. Okay. <laughs> question four is, do you have a dog voice? Do you use a dog voice to speak to the girls or do you give them a dog voice to personify them? Oh, for sure. Yeah. We've definitely like, cause we'll try to work out like what papaya is thinking about their voice is often your like stereotypical, how do I put this character? Like any, any character in, in like a nineties movie, who's like a little, like a little kid with like a stuffed up nose <laughs> right. like that's like their voice like oh come on mom oh you won't let me oh come on mom like that's like it's a lot easier when i'm in the moment with papaya or pixie sure. but like if you're about like having that connection with your dogs how do you not try to like crawl into their brain and personify them with a voice and and stuff i mean like yeah i'm sure if you took footage from my, my you know like our security cameras around our house and be like incredibly embarrassing, but, but yeah, for sure. We're talking to our dogs like all the time. I love that. Well, give me some yeah. of that footage for a promotion of this <laughs> yeah, sure. particular episode. Sure. <laughs> it's funny. I, I, I want to bring up there. There's a commenter and I, I, you know, playing in a band like Slipknot and I, I know when you were growing up that essay that you put on um, online, you know, talking about hockey and, you know, aggressiveness and, you know, a commenter wrote, even the most hardcore guys have a soft side. And I'm, I'm really seeing that today. So thank you for sharing that. Uh -huh. Of course. Um, last question. Uh, question five is, do you have a dog organization that you just want to call attention to that, uh, you know, maybe you guys have been around? Yeah, there's a great organization called Wags and Walks, uh, who have a couple chapters in the U.S., but uh, they have one in Nashville that my wife has worked with and actually gotten a, a few dogs herself adopted uh from there they're a great organization you know just helping to connect uh dogs in need who need a home and um and yeah so uh, so wags and walks in nashville they're uh they're fantastic they're doing good stuff okay great i'll get some more information for the outro and then uh this spring anything coming up spring summer fall uh what's what's on the docket uh music wise artistic wise yeah, well, uh, Slipknot will be on tour um, for sure. We uh, let's see, we'll we'll be going to Europe in the summer. 
uh, throughout like June and early July, I believe. We have a couple shows in the U.S., uh, some festivals that are really exciting, playing with like a lot of a lot of awesome bands that we all really like. So stuff like that is, is super exciting. Uh, we put out a record called The End So Far uh, back in September. Uh, so it'll be exciting to, you know, keep hitting on the, getting on the road in support of that. And then, uh, yeah, plenty of, you know, plenty of other stuff. I always kind of have, excuse me, I like to have a lot of irons in the fire. In fact, by the time this comes out, I'll have released a uh, a drum library of my own, which is kind of like a, a digital instrument that you can use in Pro Tools to get basically like all my drum sounds and okay. being the way I kind of have my my drums set up and you can, you know, have me basically playing on your, you know, your record or your demos or whatever. So I'll be releasing that. And in the design of the actual interface that people are seeing on their computer, it was really important to me to, to customize everything. So it's like, you know, my drums with my artwork on them, I get to design the room that they're living in. And I, I, what I wanted to do was if you left your computer idle for like 10 minutes, Papaya would come walking on the screen and like nestle into her bed next to my drum set. And then if once you got back to your computer, like she would bark and, and walk out. So we didn't quite get there, but she is in the actual plugin where she's like a playable instrument where if you, if you click out on her, that's really her barking at you. Oh, that's great. Um, so stuff like that, you know, I love, I love kind of, bringing in all different kind of sides of, of my life into, you know, into like one thing. Cause like being a, a touring musician is, is huge in my life as is being, you know, the parent to, to two amazing dogs. So, uh, so I like to bring all that kind of stuff together, but yeah, it'll, you know, the rest of this year, it'll be a lot of uh, being on the road and um, just playing more shows and on my downtime being with, uh, with my wife and our dogs. Can't get any better than that. It can't. Well, that, that sounds great. I was going to ask you, you know, by the amount we see of the dogs on your social feed, do your fans and maybe even fellow musicians, do they ask about your dogs at, on occasion? Yeah, actually, yeah. Um, a lot of friends that like we will tour with the first thing, you know, like we'll, we'll see friends like in Europe, you know, around like festivals and stuff. And the first thing, if it's a person I haven't seen in like a year or something, their first question is like, oh, my God, how's papaya? And now that we have pictures, like, how are the girls? How are the dogs? Um, so it's awesome that like our friends kind of feel like a stake in their, uh, yeah. well-being and their, you know, their little story as they're, as they're growing up and stuff. But yeah, like a lot of people, a lot of people, they, they're like, are they, like, is that a pug? Is that like, what kind of dog is that? And so we get people fascinated about, about Griffey's cause they are a very particular dog. Like they're not, they're not pugs. And and I, I know because I've, I've had, I had pugs for over a decade. And so they're, they're very much their own, their own kind of kind of dog and so people want to know about it like all over but yeah and we'll have like very nice you know people who will come to the shows and stuff they'll be like oh my god how's papaya how's how's pixie and some will make like you know some some drawings of them to give us and stuff so it, it's awesome to know that like not only do they enrich our lives but they seem to enrich you know the lives of uh of people that are checking out what we're doing creatively like that's that's pretty cool that's great that's great to hear i'm glad i got that question in because it's it is really nice to hear that they, they spread so much uh, enjoyment throughout, probably throughout the world, actually. So yeah, even, yeah, even it's, better. It's awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy that they bring, you know, bring a little bit of happiness to people's days. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Well, Jay, thank you for bringing happiness into my day and sharing your girls with me. I really appreciate you taking the time and I wish you nothing but the best in you know, 2023 and beyond. My pleasure. Well, likewise. Thank you very much. Right. A big thank you to Jay Weinberg for coming on the show and sharing Pixie and Papaya with us. The dog organization Jay has selected to shine a light on is Wags and Walks, a nonprofit organization and dedicated community of dog lovers whose main goal is to break the stigma around rescue dogs and decrease the number of dogs euthanized in local shelters by proving that you can rescue wonderful pups of all breeds, sizes, and temperaments. To donate, adopt, foster, or volunteer, visit wagsandwalks.org. Thank you to everyone out there for listening and engaging with us on Instagram. It's great seeing our little rocker dog community continue to grow, so please help us spread the word to our fellow music and dog-loving friends. We'll be back again next week with an all-new episode featuring a lead singer whose tour bus slash party bus always had a couple of dogs riding along, so be sure to subscribe and have that episode waiting for you. All right, that's all we have for you this week. I'm going to go scratch someone behind the ears. Take care, everyone. Take care, everyone.